I get to give a challenge now, and uh, I uh, will try to squeeze it, and that was really good. And what you don't know is that we've never seen it that good. All, all this week, we're, we're thinking, oh, I hope this will work. And we're like, hey, that was all right. So that was a, that was a blessing. <laughs> so we were all as, as excited as you were, <laughs> or more. Uh, so uh, uh, a while ago, uh, it was May 3rd, uh, the, the church choir had not been able to get together for a while. And of course, we had some fun with that. Mr. Brady came in as the as CLM, Choir Lives Matter, and, and we had some fun. And, and, and Mr. Uh, Pastor Armacost got up on, on May 3rd, and he, he had some uh, funny things he talked about as far as uh, um, uh, Mr. Uh, Brady, you know, standing up for the choir and, and uh, some, some tips that he wanted to give. And, and he had some funny things he put in there. Uh, uh, he talked about, you know, what is an alto, if you recall, and he defined that as a soprano who finally learned to sight read. You know, so that was pretty good. We enjoyed that one. Uh, he talked about the tenor versus the uh, terrorist, if you recall that one. And then what's the difference? Well, you can negotiate with a terrorist. Um, and of course, he had some of those, uh, those, uh, th those funny things. Now, I, I, I bring up those for two reasons. One, as a segue into my humor, because his was better. Um, so I'm going to give you a couple uh, uh, funny things. Uh, this one said, uh, did you hear about the robber that broke into the instrument store? He got away with the loot. <laughs> now, I, I, I heard some groans. And some of them were genuine, and, I, and some of you were faking. You were pretending to know uh, why that was uh, groan-worthy. Um, and and we, can tell, we can tell the difference. Um, a music teacher asked his class, what is it called when two people sing a song together? It's probably my kids from the home builders activity last night. Um, but, uh, uh, and then one is, oh, I know, I know. When two people sing a song together, that's called a... Dual. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of truth to that. Uh, so uh, the one reason why I talked about Pastor Armacost was, you know, so that my jokes could be in association with better jokes at least. Uh, and the other thing is it's kind of a fun thought. He was giving some tips. He was having some fun with it. They weren't real tips. But Mr. Brady could give a whole bunch of tips as far as things you could do to be ready for choir practice or, or when we actually sing. Uh, so there's, there's tips of things you can do. And then, of course, there's practice. Come to practice. Be faithful to practice. That will help you be ready for choir. And uh, um, these guys practiced. Uh, uh, that didn't just happen. We, we worked and worked and worked and prayed <laughs> throughout this week. And uh, they got up there. Uh, it takes some practice before you get up there. And you know, there's some heavenly choirs that you're going to be a member of. And so tonight, I want to ask you, have you been practicing? Have you been practicing? So I want to talk tonight about some heavenly helps for the eternal choir. Some heavenly helps for the eternal choir. Let me read this out of Revelation chapter 15 first. Revelation 15 verses 1 through 4. You don't have to go there, but you can if you'd like to. I saw another sign in heaven. Great and marvelous. Seven angels having the seven last plagues. For in them is filled up the wrath of God. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire. And them, here's our choir, and them that had gotten the victory, four times we hear that word over. I feel like this is the overcomer choir. The overcomer choir. Some people that had some victories during the tribulation. Them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name. Stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Who shall not fear thee, 
O Lord, and glorify thy name. For thou only art holy. For all nations shall come and worship before thee. For thy judgments are made manifest. Can you hear them? They're up there singing the heavenly version of how great thou art. Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. They're singing how good thou art. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. They're singing how glorious thou art. Who shall not fear, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy. For all nations shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest. They sing of the greatness of God. They sing of the goodness of God. They sing of the gloriousness of God. They're excited. And we're going to join one of those choirs someday, and we're going to sing for all of eternity. But you don't just show up without practicing. Are you practicing? Are you practicing? Of course, the first time you practice for that choir is when you open this mouth and you say, oh God, forgive me. Forgive me. By your mercy and grace, I'm climbing down off the throne of my heart and I'm begging you, would you take it to the place there? Forgive my treason for acting like it was my way and you were not important. Forgive me. Won't you take your rightful place? Forgive me for my sin. Won't you take your rightful place on the throne of my heart? And thank you for the breath that you've given me and help me for the rest of my life to use it to uplift your name. That's the first time. How you doing? How you doing with your choir practices? You, people like to join the church choir, but then the novelty kind of wears off and you're not as faithful. You're showing up late. You know, you're waiting for the prayer to slip in and grab your books and hopefully be in your spot by the time the person says amen or, <laughs> or any of those things. Um, so we are looking forward to some of those heavenly choirs. And I need to ask you, how have you been doing? Of course, we remember the old illustration. Remember the, the little boy that said, Mom, Dad, why is Grandma always reading her Bible? And the older sister told him before Mom and Dad could answer, she's cramming for finals, silly. <laughs> and of course, one of my favorite times of the week is when I can sing with the jolly 60s on Wednesday. Because when they sing, it's evident that they realize they're not too far from that choir in the sky. All of us should be practicing for those times. Well, I'm glad, though, that uh, you're not all in the church choir. It's nice to have an audience to sing to. But can I remind you that we're all going to be in that one, singing for all eternity. Let me read some scriptures to you. Um, in, in Psalm 113, it says, uh, Praise ye the Lord. Praise, O ye servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. Not if you feel like uh, doing him a favor. His name is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens. Who is like unto the Lord our God who dwelleth on high? Who humbleth himself? to behold the things that are in heaven. Or we were over at the Davidsons, and they had a picture of the night sky in Africa, that Milky Way and how clear it was, and, and you feel like how, how small I am and how great God is. Well, he humbles himself to behold those things. How awesome is our God. He raiseth up the poor out of the dust and lifteth the needy out of the dunghill that he may set him with princes, even with the princes of his people. He maketh the barren woman to keep house and to be a joyful mother of children. Praise ye the Lord. Oh, he's worthy of praise. Then, of course, we know Psalm 150. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with the stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Everything that hath breath. That's not just believers. He calls to the unsaved. 
Get saved and praise me. He calls to the saved. Praise me. Everything that hath breath. Not just if you're in the church choir. If you're a believer, we have the responsibility to practice. We're heading for that choir in the sky. Now, there are 30 different keys. There are 15 major keys. And there are 15 minor keys. And so when I was reading there in uh, Revelation 15, two words jumped out to me in the end there. In that song of the overcomer, it says, uh, Who shall not fear thee, O Lord? Something, one of the things we kept trying to build into the young people was, Hey, let's take this seriously. It's not just you getting the nerves to do this in front of people. This is a church service. It's not just the people that are here. God is going to be listening. Let's take it seriously. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy. So some of my heavenly helps for practice uh, coming from the scripture, I thought, wouldn't it be fun if I have this, this letter F, my three points tonight come, they all start with the letter F, and then I thought, what if... I found some hymns that were written in the key of F that go along with that point. Some of you are like, wow. And others are, huh? <laughs> so let's just give you the points real quickly. Number one, fear. It's an important part of praise. And you go, I don't like that. I don't like that. Fear means I need to be concerned about what somebody else thinks. Yeah. Exactly. That's a big part of what's missing in praise nowadays. Cain, boy, he put together his altar. It was all about what he wanted in worship. And God said, ooh, 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 what about me? And Cain was like, what about you? This isn't about you. And God said, listen, I can be merciful and, and you can still make this right. That's not acceptable worship. What makes you think it's about you? Fear is an important part of proper worship and praise. Amen. Caring about what somebody else wants. Uh, Psalm 112, verse 1 says, Praise ye the Lord, blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that greatly delighteth in his commandments. Yesterday I was talking to Jolly Sixties, and I was trying to get them to, to realize how scary the devil was. And so I said, imagine for a moment, just imagine a horrifying thought. What if every professional sniper that belonged to the U.S. military was texted my picture and said, eliminate him immediately. <laughs> no capture, no, no trial, just eliminate him. And the entire U.S. military is at your disposal to help you track him down and whatever. Just eliminate him. That would bother me. <laughs> I, I said, if that were the case, I don't think I would even make a run for it. I would just go straight down on my knees and say, God, I'm a dead man if you don't help me. And then we said, someone scarier than the whole U.S. military is after us today. What does the Bible say there in 1 Peter 5, 8? Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, he's got a picture of you in his pocket. Your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, seeketh, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. And then Brother Haiti says, whew, that really puts Matthew 10, 28 in context. And I'm like, yep, racking my brain. What's Matthew 10, 28 again? <laughs> uh, and so he helped me out. <laughs> uh, he said, fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Oh my, our God is big, and we don't fear him enough. And that's one of the heavenly helps. One of the things that we got to get organized before we get to that choir in the sky is to learn to be serious about things down on here on this earth. Fear. He's a holy, holy God. All right, so what's our song?
in the key of F, 376, 376, you don't have to sing it. Take time to be holy. Speak oft with thy Lord. Abide in him always and feed on his word. Some of you are like, he's right, it is in the key of F. And the others of you are, what does it mean to be in the key of F? <laughs> Make friends of God's children. Help those that are weak, forgetting in nothing his blessing to seek. Take time to be holy. The world rushes on. Spend much time in secret with Jesus alone. By looking to Jesus, like him thou shalt be, thy friends in thy conduct his likeness shall see. Take time to be holy, let him be thy guide, and run not before him, whatever be tied, in joy or in sorrow, still follow thy Lord, and looking to Jesus, still trust in his word. Take time to be holy, be calm in thy soul, each thought and each motive beneath his control. Thus led by his spirit to fountains of love, thou soon shall be fitted for service above. That's an important help for being ready. We need to practice that so we're ready for that choir in the sky. What else? What, secondly, there's a fullness. There's a fullness that's very important if we're going to be ready. The, the, the choir practice time right now, there's a fullness that's required. Ephesians 5, 18 through 20. Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Uh, there's a filling of the Holy Spirit. And there has to be an emptying of self before the Spirit will fill. That goes back to that first point, doesn't it? Taking time to be holy. That emptying of self so that the Holy Spirit can fill you. He won't fill what's left. The world fills you halfway. The whole, God's not going to fill the rest. He won't do it. And we know that. There has to be an emptying of self. We remember the Lord Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. He said, not my will, but thine be done. We don't understand, but we know there was a certain obedience. There was a, there was a setting aside of his own will and a, an acquiring of the will of the Father. The, the God so, so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Peter was in that same garden. Peter had no problem with being filled with self. He thought, all of this, I'm giving it to God. When he didn't realize that he should have emptied himself of all of that and filled up with God. That was his problem. He, so he goes over here. The, 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 uh, the spirit was willing. The flesh was weak. He goes over and instead of getting on his knees and saying, oh God, less of me and more of you. Oh God, help me. If I don't have your help, I'm a dead man. I have an adversary that's more powerful. Oh, no, he had, he had what it took, right? Right here. Oh, yeah, how did the rest of that evening turn out? Less of me. More of you, oh, God. It was a different Peter that, that exited the upper room and preached to those thousands, wasn't it? It was a Peter that didn't dare step outside full of self. And it was a different Peter that said this in 1 Peter 4, 7. But the end of all things is at hand. The old Peter would have said, so get out there and do something. But the new Peter said, the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. Less of me, more of you. Our song, 164. It's in the key of F. Well, I wonder if what Peter prayed in the upper room sounded similar to this. Breathe on me. Breathe on me. Fill me with life anew that I may love what thou dost love and do what thou wouldst do. Breathe on me, breath of God, until my heart is pure, until with thee I will one will, not my will but thine, to do and to endure. Breathe on me, breath of God, till I am wholly thine, Till all this earthly part of me glows with thy fire divine. Breathe on me, breath of God, so shall I never die. But live with thee the perfect life of thine eternity. The last one is fellowship. Yesterday, Laura Krigo came and played the offertory for Jolly 60s. 
and she played a Come Thou Fount. And part of that song is Tune My Heart to Sing Thy Praise. Too many of us can come and sing through the hymns on Sunday, and uh, then Monday our mouth says other things. There's an emptiness that comes from, from praise if the heart isn't tuned, right? These instruments tonight, uh, the, the strings, even string, it doesn't matter how good you are, you've got to take your instrument and tune it every time, or else it sounds awful. Every single time there's a tuning, something that's fixed, and you tune against that fixed thing, and you make sure you're ready to sing, to, to sing that praise or, or to play that praise. Every single time there's a tuning that takes place. And I tell you, if you, you fear God, and then you take part of that fullness, there's a lot of emptying of self, but it's worth it. Because you enter into a fellowship with the Lord Jesus. Lots of humbling of self. Psalm 146, verses 1 through 5. Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. While I live, I will praise the Lord. I will sing praises unto my God while I have any being. Put not your trust in princes, nor in the Son of Man, in whom there is no help. His breath goeth forth. He returneth to his earth. In that very day his thoughts perish. Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help. Makes us think of Psalm 46, 1, how he's a very present help. All that nearness to God when your heart is tuned to sing his praise. Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope the Lord is. And only when you're in his presence does this life make any sense. Psalm 1611, thou wilt show me the path of life in thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Our song is 332. Again, in the key of F, 332. My Jesus, I love thee. I know thou art mine. Again, we don't want to just sing these words. We want to have a tuned heart. We want that nearness so that these words don't have an emptiness. Remember, young people, some of you get older and all of this music bores you. You know why? There's something you don't understand. All of this isn't something you do. All of this is someone you uplift. You forget that, and all of this will have an emptiness. Church member, are the songs boring to you? It's because it's something you've been doing, and not someone you've been uplifting. My Jesus, I love thee. I know thou art mine. For thee all the follies of sin I resign. My gracious Redeemer, my Savior thou art, if ever I love thee. My Jesus, tis now. I love thee because thou hast first loved me and purchased my pardon on Calvary's tree. I love thee for wearing the thorns on thy brow. If ever I love thee, my Jesus, tis now. I'll love thee in life. I will love thee in death. And praise thee as long as thou lendest me breath. And say when the death dew lies cold on my brow. If ever I love thee, my Jesus, tis now. In mansions of glory and endless delight, I'll ever adore thee in heaven so bright. I'll sing with a glittering crown on my brow. If ever I love thee, my Jesus tis now. You're all members. If you're saved, you're a member of that choir. How you doing with your practice? <laughs>